Oh, 100 push-ups a day. <laughs> I can feel it after one day. This is good, this is good. I, th I think this is gonna make a difference. Good morning to you, hope you're having an awesome day. Happy National Knife Day. Today, well actually when you watch this, it's gonna be yesterday, because this isn't coming out till Friday, but anyways, August 24th, Thursday, is National Knife Day. Seeing as it is National Knife Day, I thought why don't we actually do something that's... Previous videos, I would showed you this tracker styled knife, and uh, I kinda did a little poll, asked for your opinion, and. And by quite a large result, the majority of you are saying do not do paracord wrap handle on this blade. A lot of suggestions for multi-segmented, multi-tone type handles, so uh, maybe glue up a couple sections together. And then what I'll have to do is figure out how I'm going to mount that, and we're going to get a little bit more into that later. <sighs> that is my second set of 25 for today. Okay, so I've just spent the last 20 minutes looking at all the different wood selections that I have. I really think this one needs a synthetic handle. Uh, the reason is because of the way that we're going to be fastening it. If you don't know the history of this blade, I kind of showed it in a previous video. This was a commission piece, uh, a friend of a neighbor, and he ended up backing out of the... He didn't want the knife, I guess, so I've got this knife. His very specific uh, requirements were uh, he showed me a knife that he liked that had a whole layout very similar to this and he wanted to do his own paracord handle wrap. This thing's done, like it's actually sharpened up, it's got its edge on it, which usually I would hate to take it to this level of fit and finish before I had scales on it. But also it's gonna be really hard to line up proper places for the, the pins to go when I don't have anything here left really. So what I'm gonna do is actually take pieces of aluminum. I've got some aluminum bar stock and I'm going to machine a little insert that will fit in here. It'll be a fairly decent fit. Not tight or anything, but just a nice precise locating fit. Maybe there, there, and there. And then I will end up drilling these little tiny spacers I'm going to make and tap them so that I can screw on some scales. That is the reason that I do believe I'm going to have to use some type of synthetic material because I don't want to be tightening fasteners into wood. I have a lot of really great wood to use, but for this one, I really want it to be uh, a synthetic just because it's stronger. So that's kind of the plan. I'm thinking this handle might come like this. And then we might actually kind of notch out this little detail right here. I don't know why I put that hole there. I did that. I don't think he'd asked for it. But I thought it might be kind of cool if our handle uh, was kind of featured around that. I've got a few ideas how I'm going to locate this and draw this. And we will kind of get to those as we progress in this little project. What I'm thinking now is that I'm going to do a single piece, so not multi-segmented, and maybe just some G10 that's layered. So this here is like coyote brown and black. I don't know if this is gonna be it. I'll do some fancy like grinding into it. I've never done that before. What they call it, like rock patterning or something like that. And then my thoughts are that maybe I'll actually acid stone wash this blade. So black it all out, give it some real cool texture to really gnarly textured handle. And that might make it look much, much more tactical. This is a utilitarian beast. It's not like an elegant, it, it looks angry. So we're gonna go ahead and use this uh, camo G10. Post office, kind of a sad story right here. A larger version of the last ditch Necker. Good little blade right there. And the reason it came back is that he had had it engraved. And I guess he wasn't happy with the way that the engraving came out. So he wants me to refinish this. I don't know. Doesn't look too deep, which is good. That's too bad, really. Interesting how on National Knife Day I get a knife back from a customer that I need to do a little rework on. I hope this one goes okay. Seems like I'm not getting enough knife related stuff done today. I've gotta to go right now and put some piles in for the, uh, like where the steps are gonna come down from the house. It has become super, super windy today. It's actually really nice because it's not so hot. It's like 24 degrees in my sea can. It's kinda of cool today. 
which is just awesome for a change. So here's the big auger bit that we'll use. Here's the auger attachment for the bobcat. Now there's supposed to be another bowl that puts that auger part onto the extension and uh, I don't know where it is, so I'm hoping I have something big enough that will work up at the shop. Okay, I think, I think if I come up to my super duper bolt bin. Uh, it's not long enough. Large bolt, my large bolt bin is empty. I guess it's plan B. Now I just need to figure out what plan B is. Do you risk it with a half inch? I'm thinking so. I've got a couple of these that I need to get done. Uh, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly try and machine these little inserts here for this guy. So I need to find a piece of aluminium. Oh no. No, oh, come on. Okay, good. Um, uh -huh. Now, this is something I sometimes use as a drift. But I've got a big drift there. I've also got a bunch of brass. So I think I'm gonna take this piece of aluminum. Yeah, it's big enough. We won't be wasting too much material. I'm gonna chuck it up, and then we're gonna turn this down. Just the right size so they'll fit inside these holes, and we'll need three pieces. So let's do that. Now, this was the first side that I had done, and it's interesting because when I check it to this hole, I mean, it's a pretty nice snug fit. I put in other holes, way too sloppy. So I flipped it over, I turned the other end down, and again, ah, uh, not that great. Look at it, right here, it's snug. But in, uh, if I check out like this hole, it's loose. I'm not sure if you can really see it, there's a little step right there. This is a little bit bigger than this, I think I'm gonna have to make one of the spacers out of this part and another one out of this part. I actually see light through it a little bit. These holes that I've drilled are not perfectly concentric or piece of aluminum is not perfectly concentric. Something's not perfectly concentric. I think for the most part, this is what we want. So I'm going to have to part off a little piece of this uh, for the one at this end. Like I want these things to be really nice and tight. That'll be good for the end hole. And then I'll have to use a little bit of this thicker portion, probably for this top hole. Part off a little piece like this. We're going to make them one quarter inch thick, I do believe. And then uh, we'll drill a hole and tap right through there. But I do believe that is gonna wait for tomorrow. It is, uh, well, it's 6.23 in the evening. I still have to punch a couple of holes for the uh, piles for our house. And we're gonna get going on that tomorrow as well as a couple other knife related things. There's one thing I wanted to talk to you about since it is National Knife Day. Is there actually such a thing as National Knife Day? Is this new? I've never heard of it before now. Blade HQ is going crazy with it like on their YouTube channel. They've got a really funny video, you should check it out. They're doing like a knife parade. <laughs> Maybe next year I could have a float in their knife parade. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, I, like, is this a real thing, National Knife Day? I mean, I'm all for it, I'm all about it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, especially, like, I mean, this is kind of a knife-making channel, and I'm a knife maker, I'm a knife collector, I love knives. I was gonna do a whole collection, like, show my entire knife collection, but I just, I, I don't have time to go find all my knives and lay them all out, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna show you the very first knife I ever made, as well as a tattoo I have of that exact knife. Stand by. Oh, she's dusty.
This is the first knife that I made. This was a piece of quarter inch thick 01 tool steel, inspired very much by Trollski, his designs. Uh, it's a really comfortable knife. I've got, I don't know if that's Cocobolo or Babinga scales, brass pins. And I did this knife entirely with a hacksaw and a file. And that was quite a bevel to put in there. I ended up going for a mirror polish and give it a quick buff. But this was before I had a belt grinder, before I had one drill press. Um, before I had all these tools that I have now, this was the knife that I'd made. And I use this knife a lot. It's been a good knife. Fantastic edge retention. I'm not sure if it's sharp right now. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's still kind of sharp right now, and I like this knife. I take it hunting and camping. This is actually really good for batoning wood. You just smack this and the boards fly apart. And you can see the surface finish there. I didn't, I didn't go as far as I should have to get all these scratch marks out of there. But you know what? This is my very first knife. Since this knife means so much to me, and I love knife making so much, I decided I wanted to get this as a tattoo. All right, so there's the tattoo. There's my knife. Very, uh, I think he nailed the shape of it. You see that? It's, it's quite recognizable, I would say. And then he kind of did this like topographical map thing, geometric shapes. I've got a lot of respect for tattoo artists. When you look at some of the blending that he's done on that and the shading, I really like this tattoo. And so after he did all that, I kind of asked him, I said, okay, uh, like what does all that represent? Like what, what is all that pattern? Uh, this obviously was like before he put it on me, but he said that to him it kind of represents cutting through time and space and knives cut through things. And uh, when you, don't know if it's too like out there, but when you think about it, every single day we're cutting through time, and as long as you're moving, you're cutting through space. So the reality is we are cutting through time and space every single day of our lives. And as a knife maker, I make knives, and my knives are cutting through time and space. I don't know, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but I really like the tattoo. Uh, originally, he was hoping to put it on my forearm, but I thought that's a little bit big for my forearm. I'm not sure I want to commit to quite that much there yet, or that there yet, but. So there you go, guys, National Knife Day. We did a little bit of knife making. I showed you my very first knife, my knife tattoo. Tomorrow, we're gonna keep on the trekker, and then hopefully we'll get some more of these little knife making projects done. I'm really hoping I don't have to go to the post office tomorrow, and I'm really also hoping that I don't have to do any bobcat work so we can uh, spend a little more time in the shop building some stuff. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click this little circle, this one right here. That will subscribe you to the channel. It always helps a lot. And then I'll put a couple other videos or playlists up here for you to enjoy. I hope you had an awesome day, guys. National Knife Day. Woohoo! Thanks for watching. Cheers.